dividing fractions and mixed numbers. Congratulations, you've reached the end of fractions, and not only fractions, but the end of unit one. First thing to know with dividing fractions is you need to understand a little bit of vocabulary. You need to know what we're talking about when we use words like multiplicative inverse. This is also known as the reciprocal. The term multiplicative inverse will make a little bit more sense when we get into the next unit of expressions and equations because you'll start to see that multiplication and division are inverses of each other. And really, rather than just dividing, you're going to see that you're multiplying by the inverse of a number. A number and its reciprocal have a product of one. So a pair of numbers that are reciprocals of each other, when I multiply them together, I get one. So let's think of this way. You know that six divided by three equals two. You know that. Well, I can multiply and still get two because I multiply six by one third. You remember from the last lesson, you would get six over three, which simplifies as two. That's the same answer. So we can reason that dividing by three is the same thing as multiplying by one third. And you can see that one third is kind of like the flip flop of three. Let's practice finding the reciprocal of some numbers. So if I wanted to know the reciprocal of four and one third, this is where a common misconception comes in because some people want to say that it's four and three over one and this is not the case because if I multiply four and one third times four and three over one, I'm gonna get something close to like a hundred and something. It's not going to be the right answer. It's definitely not gonna be one. And remember a reciprocal and a number and its reciprocal have a product of one, not 100 and something. What you need to do is take that mixed number Turn it into an improper fraction. I have an equal sign there because 4 thirds is equal in value to 13 over 3. I got 13 over 3 because I multiplied 3 times 4 is 12 plus 1 is 13. And to find the reciprocal, that's what these arrows are, I'm going to flip that over. So the reciprocal of 4 and 1 third is 3 over 13. I can prove, prove this. The proof is that 13 over 3, which remember is the same thing as my mixed number, times 3 over 13 gives me a product of 39 over 39, which is 1. So here's your how-to for dividing fractions. First, you have to make the numbers into a fraction, which was the same first step with multiplying. So let's take our example, negative 5 over 6 divided by 7 and 1 over 7. Negative 5 over 6 is already a fraction. Okay, and I want to divide that by 7 and 1 over 7, so I need to turn this into an improper fraction. So I multiply 7 times 7 is 49, plus 1 is 50. And I keep that same denominator. Second step is I'm going to multiply by its reciprocal. If you were good at multiplying last lesson, that right here is going to turn it into a multiplication problem. So I start with 5 over 6, negative 5 over 6. And instead of dividing, I'm going to multiply. The reciprocal of 50 over 7 is 7 over 50. Step 3, I'm going to follow my multiplication rules. Which if you looked at those notes, step 1, make it a fraction. They already are. Step 2 was optional. You could cross simplify. If I look diagonally, 5 and 50 can break down by 5's. And that would become 1 and 10. The next step in multiplying fractions was to multiply straight across. Negative 1 times 7 is negative 7. 6 times 10 is 60. And then I would simplify, and that cannot be simplified anymore. So my answer is negative 7 over 60. Let's condense this a little more. If you wanted to put dividing fractions really in just one step. To divide fractions, you multiply by the reciprocal. You have to flip it over. And kind of a little catchphrase that we use for this is keep it, change it, flip it. You keep the first number. The first number stayed the same. In our prior example, negative 5 over 6 did not change. I change it. I change division to multiplication. And then I flip it. I flip the second number. Let's practice now. Pause the video and then compare with what I do.
Okay, on practice A, first turn 6 and 2 thirds into an improper fraction, which becomes 20 over 3, because 3 times 6 is 18, plus 2 is 20. And then instead of dividing, I keep it, I change division to multiplying, and then I flip it, so I flip that over. I cross simplify the 3 and the 9 break down, multiply across, 20 times 3 is 60, 1 times 7 is 7. 7 goes into 60 8 times, it gets me to 56, I need 4 more, so it's 8 and 4 over 7. Practice B, turn them both into improper fractions. So I have negative 8 over 5 divided by 5 over 2. Keep it, change it, flip it. I cannot cross simplify. I multiply across and get negative 16 over 25. It's negative because I have different signs being multiplied together. And that cannot be simplified. Practice C was probably a little bit of a challenge of you. You need to always use order of operations. 1 half squared is 1 half times 1 half which is one-fourth. So I underlined it there. Next step is to divide the one-third and the one-sixth. So on this line, I kept one-third, changed division to multiplying, and then flipped one-sixth over. I cross-simplified though, those, the three and the six went down to one and two. So just this portion right here, one over one times two over one becomes the whole number two. So it gets brought down here. And I noticed I had a positive one-fourth and I have a negative one fourth, which you remember from integers just gives me um, a sum of zero. So I kind of use commutative property in my head that I combine one fourth and negative one fourth together. And so I'm just left with two.